a student was forced to resign from her position as editor-in-chief of a student newspaper for voicing her opinion on the university's mask policy. One Midwestern university spends tens of millions of dollars on diversity in their hiring process, and in our top story, a student group suggests that every student be required to take at least two courses centered around race, white supremacy, and other progressive topics. We have a great episode for you guys this week. I am Addison Pummel, and this is The Campus Countdown. Starting off with our number three story of the week, Madison Ferris, editor-in-chief of a student newspaper at Oklahoma State University, was forced to resign after criticizing the school's mask policy in the publication. In early September, Ferris wrote a column for the Ocali explaining that she had been removed from class for not wearing a mask, even though Oklahoma's Senate Bill 658 prohibits such actions. The Ocali editorial board stressed their support of freedom of expression, but nevertheless, Ferris says she was forced by the board to resign from her position. The issue here is not the violation of the Senate bill. Rather, the issue is the hypocrisy and one-sidedness of the Ocali editorial board. Ferris's article was labeled as an op-ed two days after it was published. But even in an article classified as an opinion piece, her views and experiences have been silenced. The Oklahoma State University free speech policy claims that the university seeks to, quote, provide all members of OSU community with the broadest possible latitude to speak, write, listen, challenge, and learn, end quote. However, the Ocali has completely disregarded this policy in their forced removal of Ferris from her position. Although universities across the country are fighting to protect free speech, conservatives still have a long way to go to achieve equal rights in free speech on campus, especially in their student news publications. Moving on to our second top story of the week, we have Leanna Dippy, a campus reform correspondent, here to tell you more. Thank you, Addison. Indiana University recently announced its new $30 million diversity hiring initiative, a multi-year fund to accelerate the hiring of professors from groups traditionally underrepresented in higher education. Tuition and fees for an in-state student at IU's main campus is $11,332 a year, meaning that $30 million could cover one year's expenses for over 2,600 Indiana students. Campus administrators really need to get their priorities in check. The purpose of colleges and universities should first and foremost be education. As we stray further and further from this purpose, students are not becoming the critically thinking young men and women that employers seek. Rather, our universities continue to fund everything except what happens in the classroom. Indiana University has several other DEI initiatives as well, such as a Gender Equity Task Force and a Health Disparities Fund. If Indiana University wanted to use that money to really help students, they would have invested it into the academics of their students or given free tuition to thousands of students. Thanks, Leanna. For our top story of the week, a group of students and faculty at Bates College is recommending that all students should be required to take at least two classes centered around, quote, race, white supremacy and colonialism, and intersecting experiences of power and privilege, end quote. Under the proposed recommendation obtained by campus reform, students would be mandated to take one introductory level course and one advanced level course related to these subjects within the student's field of study. Approved courses include Introduction to Gender and Sexuality Studies, Privilege, Power, and Inequality, Fem Feminist Philosophy, and Mathematics for Social Justice. This recommendation is the terrifying reality of higher education today. Colleges and universities across the country are beginning to look at the world only through a lens of race. And this is not an issue only in higher education. The introduction of critical race theory and curriculum such as the 1619 Project are infiltrating the education of our youth, all the way down to elementary school. One proponent of such courses told Campus Reform that he believes there should be incentives for faculty who accept these changes and punishments for those who do not. By requiring such courses for graduation, Bates College would be forcing both faculty and in students to embrace the leftist philosophy that concepts such as white supremacy, race, and privilege are the lens through which students should see the world. One student told Campus Reform that, quote, the change is in the works, end quote, and she strongly believes the change will take place. Our woke tweet of the week comes from Simmons University professor Rachel Gans Boriskin, who runs the left-wing blog Politics in Pink. Gans Boriskin tweeted on Sunday, quote, the other day I saw two elderly gentlemen at a table outside the supermarket getting signatures for a ballot question, as is common where I live. 
I smiled till I saw it was voter ID. I said, you should be ashamed of yourselves as I walked by, end quote. Professor, I hate to break it to you, but you need an ID to do virtually anything in the United States. Get on a flight, book a hotel, drive around town. In America, the right and privilege to vote is one of the most sacred and unique rights that we have. So why are you against protecting our elections and our right to vote with voter ID laws? Those are all the stories we have for you this week. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to follow along with all the liberal abuse in higher education on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by following us at Campus Reform. We will be back next week with another episode of the Campus Countdown. I'm Madison Pummel. Thanks for watching.